Hello, hello, darlings. Good morning. At least, where I live, it's morning. And I've got my cacao medicine, as well as a little delicious vegetarian patisserie. I love chit-chatting with my friends about deeper conversations around finding our true selves and self-expression but also about deeper topics such as jealousy and social anxiety. Today is going to be a little bit of a sister talk, let's call it like that. And we're going to delve deep into certain topics regarding our relationships and our relationships to ourselves and how these two connect so incredibly well and how can you seek advice from your own experiences from your own inner guidance to navigate your life in the best way possible for you come on and join in is crucial for anyone in general to be truthful with themselves and that comes with also being accountable and feeling responsible for our own actions not trying to push the responsibility onto someone else but rather truly face the consequences of our action i think self-acceptance also starts with understanding that some of our actions have brought us to this place, but also that our feelings are valid. And that is something that not a lot of people talk about in certain communities, that I find each emotion that we experience in some way isn't something that we should be ashamed of. Whether we feel anxious, angry, fearful, happy even, joyful or whatever, it's so easy for us to want to feel joyful and happy all the time. But whenever something comes that makes us feel anything else, we might tend to develop this shame around not feeling happy all the time especially if we come from or we live in a toxic happiness culture. That is just not the reality of everyday life. And of course, through certain practices, we can intentionally support this longer lasting happiness. But in general, there are so many things happening around us that we get triggered all the time and our attention goes everywhere. And sometimes there's just this one little unconscious trigger that pushes us towards the edge and just makes us spiral into a completely different emotion. But once we realize that we feel this way and we're not trying to push it away by immediately thinking of, I should be happy, I should be happy. If we actually dare to invite this feeling into us and try to understand why it's there in the first place, where it comes from or how can we deal with it in a constructive way instead of trying to push it away it's gonna give us the opportunity to not demonize these so-called negative emotions but rather understand them as just a state of being it's kind of like a filter that's been put on us by any sort of outside or even inside circumstance that we didn't necessarily pick up on at first. I have a past of bullying. And so whenever someone tries to initiate banter with me, it's really difficult for me to join. Uh, For a, a really long time, I used to get really sensitive about it. And for time, I kind of got used to some people's behavior. I have a few friends who really work off of banter and that's their way of communication. And I was able to understand that it's not, they're not trying to bully me in any certain way. Uh, It's actually their way to be friendly, I guess. Um, And I, I don't want it to take it so personally anymore because first of all, it's not constructive. 
uh, for me and my mental health. And second of all, they that they usually don't have any malicious intent. So why would I take it as an offense, right? But I remember at first it used to trigger me so much. Like we would get into our little group and here comes that person who would say something quite banterish. And I remember I took such offense for it and I got to the place to the group so happily and I felt so much joy. I was like, this is so fun. We're gonna have so much fun. And then here comes this person says something that totally just threw me off. And throughout the whole time, I got so angry and frustrated and I'm, I'm kind of bad at confrontation but I confronted that person afterwards, but <laughs> about this situation in general. But throughout the whole night, it was so hard for me to put myself back together and kind of come back to this place of groundedness. It just totally threw me off the rails. So it happened and it was such an unconscious trigger at that time. I just didn't really know what happened to me. Like I felt the frustration, I felt it, but I just wouldn't want to speak up about it. So I kept all of this turmoil building up inside me and it just kept on boiling and boiling throughout the whole night. And I just couldn't let it go because at that time I just couldn't, um, connect the dots well and that is why it's so important to pay attention to these triggers but first of all how can you know something like that was a trigger one of the ways that you can do that is by self-awareness and becoming curious of how you feel and why you feel certain things and even if at that time you got triggered and you didn't understand what's happening, once you reflect on it later on, it kind of gives you a sense of deeper understanding of yourself. Like you know that trigger happened because of that situation, but but most of the time it comes from a previous situation that happened in the past, most likely in your childhood, and your brain sensed a similar action, a similar sentiment, and it automatically pushed you into that state of consciousness that you had maybe at the first time when you felt that way. It's quite interconnected with the brain, but I usually manage to revert back to certain feelings, starting with the feeling at first and then trying to remember when have I felt like this in the past? Not like a day ago, but like five years ago. What was it? and then slowly going back and just finding a, or pinpointing a situation or a certain previous example that you had that could that is totally different from that but your brain automatically it goes to that usually our brains react um when we feel threatened so when did you feel threatened when was that time when you felt like your life was questioned like your safety was questioned and at that point I could totally understand why I feel like this. And then I sensing it more. Of course, you cannot try to decompress or analyze how other people think. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're trying to understand how someone else is thinking. However, you can look at it in a way of accepting them for who they are. So the way I see it, the more I spend time with myself, I realize that some of my friendships, even in the past, were based on this fear of loneliness. I was afraid of experiencing that feeling. Now that I live alone and I've been feeling lonely, not gonna lie, for some time, I could delve deeper into what company means to me and what kind of friends would I like to surround myself with. Of course, to some extent, I don't want to totally just like quit on people altogether, but there are certain people who you cannot create those deeper connections with. Like sometimes there are limits to how much you can connect with each other. And so I realized that yes, maybe there are certain people in my life who I would not like to talk to anymore because I don't need to, because I'm good by myself. Because once you realize this or you try to see the world this way, you allow more deeper connections or more aligned connections to come into your life without you necessarily forcing it. Brutal honesty can also mean 
whenever we enter a social circumstance, just telling people how we feel, being honest about it. But also, I had this conversation with one of my friends and we talked about how at first we didn't really like each other or that the other person wasn't really that intriguing to us and how much of that came down to our own personal experiences with each other. I told this person that, yes, the reason why I was quite defensive at that time was because I got quite jealous. Not jealous, I got quite envious because envy is doesn't involve a third person. It was just that other person. It was, it was just that person because she reminded me or she ignited a spark in me of an example of a person that I wanted to be at that time that I felt like I lack inside me. This person was an example of that which I craved at that time, quote unquote. So I told this person that yes, I was jealous because I saw something in you that at the time I wanted but I didn't have and I didn't know how to achieve it. And you know, it's in our human nature to get jealous if someone has something that we don't, if someone is a certain way that we are not, but we want to be. And then slowly I had to deconstruct this idea of it's not the person but it's the behavior that they want that I want that I feel like I lack and so through that I was able to put that aside and actually want to get to know this person and I realized how amazing she is and that that jealousy was all mine and that is something that I need to work on and yeah now we're friends and I am so happy for it and hmm. And I remember this person also telling me that like, we can help out each other with these sort of things. And I was like, yes, that's so amazing. Because, and of course, not everyone will want to listen to a brutally honest uh, confession of your feelings that you felt like that. Because still to this day, jealousy is something that we associate with something negative and that it's something shameful. Like how dare you be jealous of someone else? because usually we act out um, out of jealousy and uh, we don't deal with it that way. So anyway, I was so glad that, that she didn't take it as an offense or she didn't take it as um, personally. And it just shows how sometimes all we need to do is say what we're feeling or say how we felt at a certain time in our lives. And yes, not everyone will react the same way or respond the same way, but that can also be a mirror to us of that person's maturity or even just openness to your emotions and feelings without taking them personally. If they take it personally, that's something that they need to work on because it means that it triggered something in them. But you cannot be responsible for triggering someone if that came from a good place, you know? Sometimes we just end up hurting people without us realizing because we wanted to do the best at the time and it still managed to hurt someone. So it's really complicated. Life is complicated, but... Sometimes it's so good to talk about these topics because there are examples in our everyday lives where we're like shocked by how beautifully certain things happen. I was thinking of ending this video with a little bit of a nugget of exploration of what I realized as I was getting used to connections again. So for quite a long time, I was mostly alone by myself in this apartment <clears throat> because I had the exam session and that is the time when everyone goes goblin mode and they just study all the time or don't but they don't really leave the house this happened to me as well and so for a long time I was alone by myself and um, I had a quite a decent time I wouldn't say it was that easy is never easy but it was definitely a learning experience from which i can subtract something meaningful excavate something meaningful look at the words that i'm bringing to the table anyway as we moved into the second semester of uni and i started going out more not with my best friend because she's literally my sister and i just feel like i feel so comfortable around her that, you know, 
when you are with your best friend, it's just a totally different vibe. It feels like home. But when you are going out with relatively new people in your life or just um, people that you are not necessarily that close to, it caused me a anxiety. Social anxiety is um, definitely a thing of Gen Z. It's <laughs> something that we talk about so often that it's, it's crazy, but it's okay. It's okay. It needs to be normalized more that we feel like this because in an environment where people are honest again about the fact that they are having anxiety or that they are anxious, it's just gonna help the environment. It's just gonna help people kind of adjust to them more if they're open to that, whatever. But <laughs> I had a lot of... Um, I, I had experienced social anxiety for all my life and kind of coming back to a place um, where you need to go out with people more. And of course, if you want to not be alone, then you need to go out there and put yourself out there and invite people to things. And that can be a hustle in itself to just want to connect to people and also not waiting for them to reach out. But anyway, so as I was going out um, with this and that and everything, I had such great times, but the social anxiety, girl, she was having the time of her life, not gonna lie. And then one night, everything just exploded into my face when we went out for this project thingy. And I remember wanting to get so involved, but... <laughs> Some people are, you know, the type of people who are like so dominant in a certain situation and they are so unaware of that and they don't even realize how they do not give you the opportunity to speak up if you want to say anything. They're just like, I'm going to say my thing and just let that be, whatever. I, I, I'm a little bit petty about that, not going to lie, but being brutally honest, that's something that I need to work through as well, but whatever. So... I felt so anxious throughout it all and I I got to a point where I was like also tired and it, I had difficulty speaking, which I usually don't do, but that's my worst fear, you know, like that comes with my anxiety. I feel like whenever I'm anxious, I'm unable to speak. Usually that does not happen, but for, for this time it happened and I struggled so much to just like talk <laughs> and um, be able to express myself without having to think of words every two seconds and I also had some ideas but I just felt like I'm not allowed to talk because <laughs> your girl has also inferiority complex a little bit which we're trying to work on as well but it just uh, it felt so bad because at some point I was like I just want to run to the bathroom and cry my eyes out because I felt so powerless around this person. Um, and it just really made me reevaluate like um, the system that I built up. And at that time, I also had a fight with my mother. Because sometimes I tell her things that um, she reacts to in a way that I don't want to. Of course, I bring in my expectations of how a mother should be, which are in some cases are valid and, you know, sadly, I'm an adult now and um, I cannot expect my mother to give me the things that she's been giving me before. Anyway, this part of the video has become so petty, like I'm just bashing on everyone, but sometimes it's true, sometimes it's true. <sighs> Look at me bringing in peace in my life by bashing on people. Anyway. All of this kind of initiated me into a mental breakdown, which I took and went with it. Like, I cried on the floor, bitch. It, it just had to happen, right? I was delirious, but I had to be. Because I kind of feel like I had to push that out of me. I didn't... I hadn't cried for so long. Like, it's crazy. I pushed all of these emotions away. And it just felt so good to get that out of my system. And it... It cleansed me. Like, if when people say crying cleanses you, it is true. I'm an example. I'm the sole example of this statement. So it also helped me kind of see myself from a different perspective of like how much I want to be involved in certain things, but also how scared I can be 
to open up and say my opinion. And when you get into a situation when there's clearly a dominant party who just does not allow for anyone in the in a space to open up, how can you navigate that? Like, how can you express your opinions? How can you share your opinions and also feel like you get acknowledged? It's definitely made me realize again where I've been pushing things away and knowing this I can start to see that sometimes you just need to allow these people to do their thing sometimes you can speak up about it if it gets really serious or bring your own twist into it by initiating a space where everyone is allowed to speak up and it just made me see these inner battles with myself when it comes to a space where everyone shares their ideas, um, it made me see that I can do this differently, right? I don't need to follow this same path of like someone speaks out when I want to speak or I don't need to feel belittled by someone else coming with the idea and wanting to dominate the space through fail and error. Sometimes you learn something more important and experiencing these situations without quote-unquote being prepared for them is what's going to give you the opportunity to learn something about yourself something about the nature of communication and that you can change the way things flow around you just by deciding that you want to do things differently. Because in any space, sometimes it just takes one person to go against it all that will encourage others as well. So just remember that. Be the change of, in the world that you seek and be determined and enough to never back down. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy this little conversation. Join in in the comments if you would like to add any ideas, constructive criticism, anything. Uh, if you just want to be mean and angry, well, do that in your notes app. I don't want any destructive things in here because I believe that that's not the way to go. We do not destruct, we build. Because so many times, so many things got destroyed in our lives. Our, but our mission is to build. So build rather than destruct. Thank you lovelies for being here and see you in my next one.